Good afternoon, everyone. This is your girl, the one and only, the truly, Miss Coteria. And welcome back to my channel, My Opinion Vlog. Y'all know y'all girl is still suffering very badly from this cold. And, you know, I'm still congested in the nose, as you, as you can hear. Um, my chest is still kind of a little bit tight, sore throat. Y'all know I have, um, I've always had sinus and allergy issues since I was a young girl. So when I get sick with an up, uh, upper respiratory infection, it really takes a toll on me. But anywho, you know, I'm trying to push through and I'm trying to, you know, push out all this content, you know, while I'm at home recovering. I'm not at work um, today and plus it's the weekend, so I don't work on the weekend. But let's go ahead and get into the young lady by, who goes by the name of E. Kane. That is her TikTok name. Um, recently, she has been trending all over social media because of a live that she did. And in that live, it was a very long live. Um, you know, she was kind of addressing, as most of us kind of say, a troll or a viewer that was, you know, shading her and picking at her, her appearance while she was on that live. And, you know, what she tends to do, because I've seen multiple videos, when people start shading her or picking at her or making fun of her, she kind of goes to their profile while she's on live. She has two phones. She has, I guess, the phone or maybe the laptop that she's doing her TikTok live on and she has a phone in her hand. And so she will go to that profile and she will start, you know, roasting them and picking back at them based on their profile pictures. You understand? She kind of, you know, been doing this for a very long time. And that's also what kind of makes her, you know, a very popular TikTok influencer because she kind of goes back and forth with the people that comes for her on her live. But um, the young lady, E. Kane, she made some insensitive um, colorism statement during that live when she was going back and forth with this dark skinned lady. OK, um, I don't know how what the dark skinned lady said to her originally. That made her, you know, to start coming after her. But I'm just going to hone in and zone in on that part where she was just saying that, you know what, you're dark skin. You know, she was calling her unattractive, ugly. But she was like, you a dark skin woman. You're not on my level. You can't reach the success and heights that I have reached because I'm a lighter skin woman. Okay. So she was, just, and you know, I'm going to be honest with you. E. Kane is correct. We all seen in this industry you know, especially the Hollywood industry, they tend to favor and pander to a lighter skin um, complexion woman than a darker skin woman. Now, mind you, Ekane is not a celebrity. She's a popular TikTok influencer, specifically on TikTok. OK, she's well known on TikTok. I believe she has three or four million followers. So she was kind of like demeaning, degrading the woman. And, you know, she went on her profile, was calling her ugly. It was saying she's an ugly, dark skin woman. She will never make it and go nowhere in life. Uh, for hating on another, you know what I'm saying, black woman, even though she's a lighter skin, complexion black woman. So when E. Kane said this to the woman that she was addressing on her live, this did not sit well with us dark skinned women, especially the followers that follow her and support her content on TikTok. I don't follow, I don't really know the young woman that well. I have recently came across her videos a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago. I have watched and clicked on her video. She's a very toxic um, TikTok influencer, and I see why she's so popular because she's like an open book. She gave me vibes of Christine Rock. You know, this is Christine Rock number two written all over it. She likes the um, drama. She likes the attention. She's definitely an attention seeker. She likes the thrill of people talking about her in a negative way. You know, she gets off on this stuff, I can tell. She does a lot of the stuff for clicks and views. She's also in a very um, dysfunctional, toxic relationship with her on and off baby daddy slash boyfriend. They break up, they make up. I seen, you know, a, a lot of video clips when I was doing research on her um, in the recent past couple of days where, you know, they're fighting each other. You know, he's slapping her down, spitting on her, degrading her. You can tell he's a womanizer. Don't have no respect for women. I seen a video where he was saying that he slapped bitches for a living and that if any woman crosses him or comes up to him, he'll slap them too. And she's in a in the car looking dumb and stupid, you know, got this smirk on her face. So, like I said, she's definitely a certified drama queen. She likes this type of attention because it gets her clicks and views and a lot of support on TikTok. You have to understand, us minorities, us black folks, mind you, we like, I don't like it, but most young, you know, black 
women and men, they like, you know, the baddies, bad girls club or the baddie south, you know, the Zeus network. They like all the fighting, the grading, you know, pulling, you know, people hairs, they tracks out, you know, ruining their clothes. They like that type of negative activity. I don't watch that type of stuff. You understand? So with her, you know, doing this on live and she's kind of like exposing, you know, what's going on in her life, you know, people like that. So I see why she has a lot of viewers and followers. They like that dysfunctional dynamic that she has going on. And the sad part about it, she is a mother. It looks like she has like two or three younger kids. So while she's doing all this, her kids is always in the vicinity. They're, they're always around and kind of watching and encounter this toxic behavior with their dad and their mother going back and forth. You know, she's cursing. You know, she's always got that phone in her hand on live. So like I said, she lives this lifestyle because she know it keeps the bills paid and the lights on. So she likes all the drama. You know, she, it, she feeds off of it. She loves the fact that she goes viral. She loves the fact that everybody's talking about her, even though it's in a negative way. And she's very arrogant and she's very conceited. I do get that from her because with a lot of videos that I, I encounter, she's always belittling us average women. And y'all know I kind of, you know, did a video, one video, which probably got almost 25,000 views on YouTube about Ari Fletcher. You know, I didn't mean to go in on her. I would just give a regular commentary, but I end up putting her on the spot and in her place. And it wasn't really something I intended to do, but I was keeping it real. You understand? I don't like when I see women that reach a certain height and at a certain um, place, a successful place in their life. And she's only successful on TikTok. Let me be specific. She's very known on social media, but she's really, really popular on the TikTok platform, by the way. I hate when uh, a woman, you know, who started from the bottom, reach a new height and a new success and they start to shit and belittle the average woman. They kind of forget where they, where they came from. And this is what she started to do because in a couple of lives that I've seen, she was just saying that, oh, I, oh, um, I got money. You know, she makes over 40000 a month on TikTok. You know, her family are good. They eat. You know, she has a savings account for her kids. So when they turn 18, they'll be well off. They can go to college, be whatever they want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like she have invested money uh, aside for her kids, which that is great. I love, you know, I think she's 23 or 24 years old. I love that she is creating a savings account for her kids. If that is true, I'm not sure. You know, somebody financial um, business is not our business, but she says this. And I like that. But, you know, she always kind of say that, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all are struggling. Y'all beneath me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make money. And she also is very arrogant in saying that, oh, I can't be canceled. I don't apologize. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of things that she may be, she said a lot of things she's wrong on. She's too arrogant. You know what I'm saying? And she's too prideful to apologize. And the only reason why she was going to apologize because she said she has dark skinned followers that she knew that she offended. And that's the only reason why, you know, she was apologizing. And she apologized slightly three or four times. But in the same sentence when she was apologizing, she was just saying, like, I don't have to apologize. Okay, I could have came on here. She's, like I said, very cocky prideful, arrogant, you know, she's saying she don't have to apologize, you know, her followers got her, they're going to always forgive her, and see, she's the type of young woman she needs to be pop. She needs to be made an example of. She's too, like I said, like on a high horse, and she really need, need to be brought down to reality. She feels that she's so popular solely on TikTok, and she feels like she cannot lose her viewership. She cannot lo lose her um, core fans. By what she said, she don't realize the insensitivity of her statement because right, you right, you offended a whole group of dark skinned women who support you. When that goddamn motherfucking ninja, that nigga, when he's dragging you by the little little patchy patches of hair that you got on your head and disrespecting you, calling you hoes and bitches and sluts and stuff, these same black women uplift you and say it's going to be okay. Okay, they give you words of encouragement. They speak life back into you. And so for you to sit up there and downplay the apology and in the same sentence, in the same note, say, oh, I don't really have to apologize. I really didn't have to. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't apologize for shit. What makes you think you're big, bigger and larger than life that you shouldn't apologize? Because you didn't keep it directly on the woman that addressed you. Like you start to bring up, what does is, what is her complexion and her skin color has to do with what she said about you? You couldn't just keep it on her physical appearance. 
you had to bring up her skin color because you had nothing else to say or nothing else that you could read her on. See, that's what people do. They tend to, you know, um, downplay the situation when they have nothing else that they can say about you. If they can't read you based on your appearance and your looks, this is when they use the, you know, the color card, the colorist game, the colors card. And that's what she did. And she didn't think people would catch it because, like I said, she always run her mouth and she gets a lot of, you know, little coins, support, super chats over there on TikTok. Like I said, in her mind, she feels like she's on top because she has three or four million followers. She feel like she can't be touched. She feel like, you know, she can't be messed with. And see, this is why you have to humble people like her. You have to show them, mind you, we make you, we can break you. I told y'all in a, a video I did a week ago how I see where on TikTok, a lot of um, the TikTok viewers are unfollowing celebs. And they have lost thousands of followers. And they could do this to EK, and they need to do this to her. All the money that she's bra she brags about that she makes over $40,000 and we peasants and we poor, we broke. She's always belittling um, her viewers. Every time they, they pick on her and talk about her, you know, she always tend to, you know, bring up her money. And your money can't be that long because based on the little house that you're leased, and that's another thing. Let's go ahead and get into it. You understand? So while we broke and we poor and we not on her level and she can go to certain places because her the complexion of her skin is lighter and stuff, I can see you lack luster and you lack education somewhere because if you're making over $40,000, EK, your ass should be paying a mortgage. You should be paying a mortgage. And if you're making $40,000 a month, the mortgage that you should be paying, you probably shouldn't be paying it for no more than two years, depending on the cost or the value of the house. If it's a million dollar home. See, that's why I say like you always on live degrading and demeaning people. But like I said, no one is telling you with all the money that you make a month, you should, you should already don't purchase a house. Or you should be a homeowner. You literally bragging about leasing a fucking house. And that's not even a brag in itself. Oh, I have a five or six bedroom house. All my kids got their own room and a four bathroom house. And y'all living in apartments or living, you know what I'm saying, with your family. Or you living in your car, whatever, this and that and the third. You understand? But you making all this money and common sense didn't tell you you need to reach out to a realtor. You need to be purchasing a home, not motherfucking making a person who own that home more richer with your dumb ass. You understand? If you're making over 40000 you should be in a fucking home with a yard. But your elevator don't really go up past a motherfucking second or third floor. I can already see that about you. You're very arrogant. And you're bragging about all this money that you're making and that you're investing in your kids, which that is really good. But like I said, you look like you're living in a goddamn section at home. If you ask me, the house is always fucking dirty, untidy. You sit your funky ass on goddamn live, and I don't even know if you really take a bath like that. Because you on live more than you really entertaining your kids. And that says a lot. You looking fucking crazy, you know. I don't know why you decided to cut your hair attention like that. You got all these patches going on. I don't even know if you have, if you suffer from al al alopecia. I'm not even sure. Alopecia, excuse me. Al no, alopecia, excuse me. I'm talking fast. Alopecia. I don't know if you're currently struggling with that. Are you intentionally cutting your hair for clicks and views and get a reaction? But you're looking crazy. And it looked like you're having some, to some sort of midlife crisis or a little bit of a mental breakdown in between. Because you just look fucking crazy. And you are a very attractive young, a very attractive, beautiful young woman. I give that to you. And not because you high yellow. But you always twitching your fucking eyes every goddamn second, every time you're talking. Okay? Like if you having some type of like you need, or like if you're in distress. And you need somebody to help. you always twitching your fucking eyes. you always talking with your lips turned outwards. I don't know what's going on with this young woman. But she seems like she's on the spectrum. I don't know if she's acting like this intentionally just to get, you know what I'm saying, more views or getting people to interact with her. Like I said, I have not been watching her. I, I don't follow her. She's kind of like new on my radar. I'm trying to, you know, get a sense of who is this woman? Who is she? What she do? So if y'all know about this EK lady, I mean, EK lady, excuse me. Please educate me in the comment section. But all I know is that she's very arrogant and conceited. And she always bragged about her money. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got money, money, money. But it don't really show. Where's your goddamn cars? You know, are you investing that money into property, business? You know, I'm talking about all this money you get it. But you need a financial advisor to help you. 
If you got all this money, why can't you hire your hand, a handy service? Why can't you hire a fucking maid? Because you need it. Why is your clothes all over the fucking floor and your bed is not fucking made? All this time while you're alive, you need to be very proactive and clean your goddamn filthy, nasty ass house and tidy up your goddamn kid's room. You got all this other bullshit to talk about. But you feed off that drum that you got on and off with this motherfucking sorry ass nigga that you got up inside there who ain't paying no fucking bills, who don't, uh, who don't uh, contribute to shit. He just using you and, 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 and get on live with you and beat your ass. And while you're not home, he bringing a woman back, back inside your goddamn crib. And you seem to be obliged. You don't care. Like this little mama have a lot going on. This young lady have a lot going on and it's sad because even though she's larger than life on TikTok, but she is popular for the wrong reasons and the wrong things. I think she could be a great mother. And I see she, you know, do tend to her kids. Her kids is always in her vicinity. They always around her. But it's not good for them to be in that toxic relationship with their dad and your on and off boyfriend. And the kids should not be watching him beat you down like a bitch in the street. Okay? They shouldn't watch him demean you, call you out your name. That is not good. And you have girls. You have girls. And they watching this. You know, one thing about it, she's an open book. And, you know, she talks about her past, her struggles, about her not listening to her mother, her, you know, being on the street, her, you know, having sex with eight men at a time in a hotel. And she had to catch a bus. You know what I'm saying? That's fine and dandy. But you don't have to keep on degrading yourself. You got the, the platform. You got the followers. You can turn a bad situation into a good situation. You don't have to keep on doing crazy stuff to get a response and a reaction. Because every time when these people view you in your life and they tell you about yourself and they're laughing at you, you get offended. You get highly offended. You get very sensitive and then you want to go to their profile and you want to roast and gag them. But you know what you're doing by getting on live. You know, you're taking off your lace front wig. You know you got patches in your hair. You know, I don't know why you don't go to a professional stylist or a barber and cut it all off and so they can tape it up so it can look very nice. So you intentionally, you know, got your hair looking that way. I even see the little a, a piece of a live where your child had some clippers and they was trying to cut your hair. You see what I'm saying? Like you doing all this for clicks and views. But I don't get why you get so offended when people pick at you and talk about you. And you know that's what you want. It feeds your energy and stroke your ego. Like you are very you you are a big attention seeking heart. You are. For the wrong reasons. But what really kind of bothered me is when you try to downgrade black women. Let me tell you something. It's a lot of successful black women in this industry. A lot of them. You got Oprah. You got Angela Bassett. You got Regina King. Who else? It's a lot of my academia. Regina Hall. Like, so what are you, what are you saying here? See, what, what, I, I'm pretty sure most of your viewers... I don't want to be in your shoes. I would never want to be like you. You're not a influence. You, you are a very bad influencer. Okay. You're very bad with a young generation of women that watches you. I, I wouldn't want to take any advice from you. I wouldn't want to be like you because like I said, you're leading down a path of self-destruct. You can tell something, you know, you're making all this money, but you're not happy. You can have all the money in the world and still could be miserable. You're making all this money. And like I said, you're getting on live, spiraling out of control. And all this sister, this sister, this sister. That about to get on my goddamn nerves. Sister. You understand what I'm saying, sister? I didn't mean to do this, sister. I'd be like, oh, God. See, this is what happens when you make the wrong person popular. When you make the wrong person influencer famous, because she ain't Hollywood or a celebrity. She's an influencer famous on TikTok. This is what happened. They get a little bit of buzz, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of traction, a little bit of TikTok fame, and it goes to their dome. And now the ones that helped her get there, now we ain't shit. We peasants, we haters, we beneath her now. We broke. We not on, on her level. She's untouchable. Y'all need to humble her. Make E.K. an example. Make her an example. And I know why people, I like, I know why people follow her because she like a Krishan Rock. She like a Krishan Rock, an open book. She gets on here and do all this crazy drama five stuff with her ex-boyfriend slash baby daddy for clicks and views. And people love drama. Drama sells. You're going to trend with drama. But, you know, that's all I got to say about this E.K. lady. But, um, like I said, when she's saying that dark-skinned women, it, let me tell you something. 
what she said, a lot of that is true. It, it's just her delivery and her tone. A lot of what she said is true. We know there's a major colorist um, favoritism when it comes down to Hollywood. They tend to pander to the light um, complexion women in the industry instead of the dark. That is true. But it's just the way she said it. You understand? They call the woman ugly and less than. That's what she went too far. But that's all I got to say about the E.K. woman, and I'll catch y'all later.